I'm at the bank making money, making moves. Machines with tools and drills, making grooves. Missions impossible, that's lots of I'm upside down, hanging like Tom Cruise. Hey traders from around the world, welcome to another video in the day trading series brought to you by Real Life Trading. My name is Jeremy Alexander Newsom and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Real Life Trading. Our mission is to enrich lives. The goal and the purpose of this video is to explain to you a little bit about what short float is and specifically how to use it in your day trading. Now, this is an exciting video because this is the first one that Mr. Blake Anderson has done for real life trading. Who is Blake Anderson, you might ask? Well, number one, he's a great friend of mine. Number two, he's a phenomenal trader who was a full-time trader in New York City at one of the really big banks there on the floor, professional, using money. He's also an owner of his own hedge fund. This guy is incredible and he's massively good looking. <laughs> so if you want to learn a little bit more about short float, how to use it and specifically how to apply it to your day trading, number one, go ahead and let's watch this video together with Mr. Blake Anderson and at the end, I'll also kind of be showing you how you could have used that exact strategy to play the iRobot gap that he's talking about. It's really exciting, totally exceptional, insanely free, and you're gonna absolutely love it. Thanks so much for tuning in. You rock. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Blake Anderson here with Real Life Trading. Um, I had some traders reach out to me um, asking about short floats. So I want to take the opportunity to walk through that since we have a really good example tomorrow with, um, with iRobot, so ticker symbol IRBT. I'm gapping up on earnings. So today is July 24th. It's Tuesday. Uh, it's 9.06 my time, mountain time here in Denver. Uh, it's probably much later for you guys. So if you don't get this tonight, maybe you get it first thing in the morning. Um, I'll try to keep it short and sweet, uh, but also give a decent detailed explanation of what short float is and what is going on. So here's the technical analysis. Here's the daily chart on ticker symbol IRBT. Um, let's see what happens. So earnings comes out and she's gapping up to 84.50 currently. Um, in after hours of trading. Yes, this is above all this. And I know a lot of people are saying, wow, that's a big move. It is 18%, 18% move. Now, lots of people think, hey, an 18% move, do we fade this? Do we short this? Possibly, there's a possibility of it. So let's talk about this topic that everyone um, has kind of been shooting me messages on. Uh, so this is a, a website called Finviz. Uh, it's spelled F-I-N-V-I-Z-E, or excuse me, V-I-Z. Um, if you will, just type your ticker right here. In this case, it's I-R-B-T, uh, and it brings up iRobot, and it gives you a great snapshot of some fundamentals um, that most people look at. So a couple things to notice here. Um, you know, I look at sales quarter over quarter. Market cap's $2 billion, so a lot of room to move. Um, but the main thing here is short float. So let's break this down. What does float mean? Shares float, 27 million. It basically tells you how many of the shares or common stock is available for us to trade as traders and investors on the public markets. Uh, what, short, what does short mean? Short means that you have a bet that the stock will go down. It will decline in price. Um, if you're long, you have a bet that it's going up. So let's say you own, you own Apple shares, you're long the stock. So let's combine those two, short float. So 41% of this float right here, 27 million is short. So what's that? What's that number? I don't know, somewhere around 11 million or so. Um, so full disclaimer here, this short float number, uh, it only gets captured twice a month on most platforms, so like the first and the 15th. So it could be off. Um, but the thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of people are on the wrong side of this trade right now. There's a lot of people at home or in the office trying to figure out how they're gonna get out of this trade if they didn't already. Um, if you're just curious, short ratio just means if iRobot trades its average daily volume, it's gonna take about 14 and a half days for all those shorts to cover. All right, cool, Blake, thanks for the information. 
What do I do with that? How do I make money? How do I trade that? Um, so we know, so right, this is up here at 8460. I'm going to go back to the daily. We know this is gapping up here. So think about this. Think about this in an opposite or an opposing view um, in terms of being long a stock. So today we had ticker symbol WHR, Whirlpool. Whirlpool gapped down. So this makes sense for mo most people, right? Everyone that bought or owned Whirlpool, I mean, man, I can keep going back. All these people are on the wrong side of the trade. There's no way that any of these people are profitable that owned a piece of this stock. When I say owned, that purchased a piece of this stock um, during all of this. So what's going to happen here, all these people are going to start freaking out, right? This fear is going to kick in. They're going to sell. They're going to find ways to get out of this. And um, this, the, theoretically, the, you know, the, the odds say this is going to move down. They need to come out of this. They need to come out of this trade. So what would be the opposite? If you're long or you own something and it gaps down, the opposite is if you're short something and it gaps up, now you have to come out and it's gonna push it up. So you have to buy to close your position rather than sell. This would be selling to close it. Now you have to buy to close it. So let that sink in while we hop over here. You have 40% buying the close, which is gonna cause a push up, and then you have new buyers. Why would you have new buyers? Well, let's talk about earnings. This is why I love earnings season. We get to bake this cake. We get to make this cake, rather. What do I mean by that? Um, basically, all the ingredients. It's a terrible analogy, I know, but um, it works, people understand it. So what are the ingredients that are gonna make this good trade? Uh, one of them was a high short float on a gap up, trapping a lot of those shorts. What else do I look for? Earnings are cool. This is great. More than doubled in terms of beating the estimate. But this can be manipulated, right? If I lay off half my staff, the bottom line is going to look better because I don't have as much payroll. Um, so what I want to see is sales or revenue growing. And right here you have 226 versus 221 growing 24% year over year, which is really high. A lot of the high tech companies um, that we look to get long or own in high trend plays or sell puts, we look for this number to be 30%, um, which means basically the company will double in like two and a half years, which is extremely high growth. So 24 is high growth. Uh, there you go, Amazon's Prime Day, they sold out. And this is talking about um, full year numbers. And I just know from reading the reports earlier that basically they up their guidance and forecast going forward. So most important thing is revenues. You can't fake, you can't manipulate how much you sold. And the fact that they are upping or increasing their guidance going forward is huge because stocks don't trade on what they're worth today. They trade on what, they, what investors think they will be in the future. All right? So let's pair all those things together and you have high short float, meaning people are, the shorts are on the wrong side of this trade now. And if anyone's ever traded on margin in brokers, we know that you get usually less margin on shorts than you can on longs, um, especially overnight. So more likely brokers will start margin calling some traders. Um, this is gonna cause some, some real panic. Great earnings numbers. Let's zoom out a little bit, and this is what we have, right? I know 20% or 17% seems like a lot, but if we're up here, we definitely have moon, uh, room to move, right? If you saw this intraday as an intraday pattern and something was here, would you think it could continue to move? Yeah, probably. So just a different time frame, um, but keep that in mind when you are thinking it's time to short this guy tomorrow because it's up too much. Um, in fact, if, if that is happening and people start trying to short this, um, it's very likely that they just continue to stumble over each other and it pushes up. Now, disclaimer, don't blindly go long the stock tomorrow. This is basically what we do as traders. We try to find um, very high probability plays 
and very good reward to risk opportunities based off technical levels. So what I'm doing here is trying to feed you the ingredients, some of the things that I look for uh, to make up for, to make very good trades. And this is one of those, but really the topic of the conversation is this short float. Um, what is high? Uh, anything over 10% starts to get in that high range, 20%. Um, I'll start doing jumping jacks, getting ready for a good trade. 41% with this type of gap up. Um, I'm super excited to see the possible, possible move this, this thing can make tomorrow. Um, so for everyone that asks, this is short float. Finviz is where I go to find it typically. I know there's other sites out there. Um, but basically, this is just telling us that almost half the people that are in this stock are on the wrong side if this holds above this 84 level tomorrow. So I hope that helped. Um, I know this will get to you guys late. I'll be around in the morning. Feel free to ask me questions in Slack. Um, again, I hope it helps. I should have done this sooner. I should have done this live at some point. Um, and I'm more than happy to do that again. I just wanted to get this out to you guys because I was going to do it for a few traders anyways and wanted you all to have it in your hands. But uh, I will talk to you guys and gals tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's make some R's. See everyone tomorrow. All right, team, welcome to the after part of that video. So Blake just got done absolutely crushing it. And I wanna kind of circle back and give you an idea of how a few traders play this one. Now here's the exciting part. Um, I will hop over to our Slack channel. This is our exclusive kind of chat room, text message alert kind of location. And this is uh, accessed by anyone who joins the trading room. This is me and Blake chatting over here just to prove that we're friends. <laughs> and uh, I'll scroll up a little bit in the chat pane. Um, let's see where we were chatting about that. Okay, so just a little bit ago, who played IRBT on the one minute? Got 13 replies. So Blake, Brian, Michael, Melanie, uh, there's Kay playing it, just absolutely wrecking it. So let's discuss this gap. Um, obviously, Blake, again, just yesterday, well, it was yesterday. Right now, it's present for you. but. Yesterday, he made this video, and this was before the gap was happening. This was before the market was open. So as you know, and as he discussed in the video, and as you have learned in our previous uh, videos, hopefully, if you haven't, make sure to check those out. Um, this is just one of many of the reallifetrading.com free programs and classes regarding day trading. But you can, uh, at any point in time, hop over and check that out. Regardless, this is a bullish gap and go. So we know that. We know it was bullish. We know to be keeping an eye on it for a bullish trade and gap and goes are much more aggressive, right? So even if you play this one on the five minute chart, uh, you'll notice that it had a really nice pullback after four white candles. It pulled back into some moving averages. Got, uh, got a little bit of a hammer candle there, a morning star reversal pattern there. You would have at least known or would have known to go bullish on iRobot. It was one that would have been a good understanding. Now, if you go a smaller time frame, right, with a bullish gap and go more aggressive, let's say you're doing it on a three minute chart. So there's the nice, beautiful bullish S curve into the three minute. And in fact, there's your one white soldier candle. So after that candle post, right, you're getting in above the high of that candle, the stop below the 10, which actually would not have triggered um, this next black candle, would have ended up triggering right here at 9.15 central time. And that would have been even a beautiful setup, even more beautiful because that little doji right there at 912. Let's say you're doing a little bit of a smaller time frame on a two minute chart. So on a two minute, we're starting to get even easier because you're entering even earlier. Check this out, high wave candle. So you had 120 seconds to set up an entry here with a stop right there. And once another black candle comes in, you get this inside candle. Right, building pressure. You know some people are shorting. It's happening on massively low volume. Inside pennant pattern candle breaks out. You've got to get triggered in on that um, you know, fifth, fifth to sixth minute. And even if you didn't get triggered in there, you have another seven and eight minutes right, to get triggered in on that pullback uh, with a pullback in the retest of the original two minute high. So as many of you know, I often do mention to wait around two minutes on the gap and go just for your first few minute candles to really square themselves out, get those wicks and that volatility underway. Um, the first one minute candle you'll notice was indeed a bearish candle. So there were people selling at open. There were people shorting at open. 
and with a close above that high wave bearish candle, you know those traders are trapped. And again, with the high short float, as Mr. Blake Anderson's mentioning, it breaks out, get a nice little retest, continuing higher, beautiful stair step pattern. I mean, you know to be taking this long. And the cool news is, even if you're a brand new trader, if you have an idea and an understanding and a determination of what you're doing, and then you also understand why you're doing it, that can compound to have a very effective process, procedure, and of course, results. I hope that was a beneficial piece of the information. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And yeah, awesome trade, ladies and gentlemen. Way to go. Keep it up. You are absolute stud muffins. Let's keep making magic together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found that video beneficial. It was, of course, entirely for free, and that's because it was made at Real Life Trading. Our goal and mission is to enrich lives and to teach people all over the world, regardless of their background, creed, color, or economic standing, how the stock market works and how to properly and safely trade and invest in it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe for many more of these videos. And until we meet again in another series of videos, wherever you might find us on the internet, either here on our YouTube or on our Facebook page or on our website or any various other spots, <laughs> you rock. And until next time, love life, live life and trade it. I'll see you. Bye.